Hi, I'm Stephen Hare from Archery Supplies, and behind me is my new solar and battery system. Right, so it's got a battery, 10 kilowatt battery, and a 12 kilowatt solar system on the roof. This is my house. Right, I've got these systems installed on basically most of my properties. Um, so business, and I'm going to just talk about why I have this. Right, so there's a solar system on the roof. And there's a battery here so if there's a power blackout I can keep functioning right so I'm going to just talk a little bit about that our state where I am in South Australia we used to produce power here we used to have power used to be made by by the government we had a government agency who used to make government so when one of the governments was in power it said we need to pay off debt because debt's a bad thing. We want to get rid of this debt and put our budget back into back into the positive so we don't live with all this debt. So they sold off our power. In the process of doing that, the people who brought our power blew up the power stations and now import the power from Victoria. As a result, the cost of power, as a, when I say as a result, there's various factors. As a result, the cost of power for business is really, and for business and residents is very high. So for me in my business, um, I might have a power bill a month of $2,000, okay? At my home, I might have a power bill of, let's say three or $400 a month. So I put a solar power system on the roof to reduce those costs. Um, and I've got a battery system here, so at nighttime I don't have to pay the exorbitant prices which is 50 cents a kilowatt. Now, one of the parliamentarians, um, her name's Penny Wong. I don't like Penny much, I'll just say that straight out. She's like, everyone, she's like, renewables are cheaper. So by putting a solar power system on your roof, power's cheaper. The problem with this policy, and it's a policy that is pushed from either both sides or what, is that it's good for people who can afford it. Because if you're rich, you can put a power system on your roof, you can put a battery on your property, and then you don't have to pay power. Okay? The problem is you've still got to maintain the network. So there's all the power poles and the power, you still need power. And for the people who can't afford it, for people who rent businesses, the cost goes up because a whole lot of people are not paying for that network like myself. Now when I put power back into the network I get five cents. When I take power out it costs me 50 cents. So 10 times. Now I just want to talk a little bit about that. So in my business I have a 30 kilowatt solar system on the roof. 30 kilowatts um, which should be more than enough to power my business. It's a very big system. Um, last month my power bill was $600 because when there's no sun, it still draws power, and that was $600. By putting a battery in, which costs $7,000, that should cover the costs of that $600, so I should get no power bills. This is the theory. So effectively, that battery will pay for itself in a year. Theory? I don't know, right? Now, the other reason why you get power, why you want solar and batteries, was there was an event two years ago where there was no power in this state, the state I lived in, because the power lines connecting my state to Victoria were cut because there was a, there was a freak storm and the power went out and they, there was no power in the state for two weeks. So that means you've got no FPOS machines, no computers, no internet, for two weeks. How do you operate a business for two weeks when you've got no power? It means you've got no fridges, it means the supermarkets have got no power. It's a literally society can crumble. Right? So one reason why I have this and this and it's why I put it on the business because if it's happened before it could happen again. We do not have a position in the state on which I live where power is guaranteed. Okay, I think it's a very sad state of events if you've got a business because you still have to pay your wages but then you can't get any income coming in because you can't 
print labels, you can't ship stuff out, you can't look at the orders, it becomes a huge problem. Now you can run your mobile phones, although how do you charge your mobile phones? You can go and get a solar charger, you can go and buy a generator to charge. Well, the problem is all the generators get brought out because everyone goes and buys one and there's only so many in the supermarkets. Um, so it becomes a huge issue, right? When you've got no power for a state. So by buying these, by buying batteries and solar for my business, I'm trying to, it's like insurance for my business. It's basically saying if I have an event where the, where the blackout, which seems to be relatively common, then I can still operate. The last two weeks, my phone has had no phone coverage because the phone towers have been out. And I get a message from a person, which is really weird because I can still receive text messages, I think. And I think it's because there's a different way of doing text messages than the phones, something through the internet. But I get a message, are you trying to ignore me? As one of the guys from Archery and I'm like, he goes, you're not taking my phone calls. It's like, I'm not getting a message back. I'm like, go and have a look at the phone network. There's no phone coverage in my network. It's down for three weeks. I live in the city area and there's no phone coverage for three weeks. Now I know this has occurred in America because I watched a podcast saying that their phones would been out for, I don't know, three weeks, no reason given. But the other phone carrier did have phone coverage, right? There was a, there was a situation about three months ago where the entire tower was down and there was completely no coverage, which means no FPOS, no internet. Now, so this has a problem for my business. It's like, how do I set it up so I have got coverage? I can use my mobile phone as a um, internet provider, as a hotspot to supply my computers in the shop, which then means my computers then need to have Wi-Fi um, at the moment they're plugged in with blue cables. Um, I need to be have different systems in my store, so I need to have different phone systems. I think my, from memories, my business worked, my business internet worked, but my phone system didn't work, so I couldn't receive any phone calls, but I could still process the orders because my internet was through a hardwired phone line to my business, but I had no phone, so people couldn't ring up and go, where's my order? Um, but we could physically do emails, we could physically do stuff, but there was no phones. So I'm just saying, as far as a business perspective, you need to be, you need to think, do I need this sort of level of insurance to keep operating? Um, and what's my risk of having this versus not having this? So like I said, for $7,000 to get a battery, 10 kilowatt battery, I figure it'll pay for itself in one or two years and let's even roll it out to five years. I don't care. But on the occasion when there's no power, I can still run my business. So let's say in the next five years we have a power outage, let's say even for two days. This covers itself because all those wages, I can still keep operating my business. So... Anyway, it's something to think about. I don't know how reliable your business is as far as power. I know when I've visited homes, friends in America, they have generators which plug into their house and their generator kicks in if the power runs out. And I thought that was amazing. I've never seen anything like it before, um, which was really weird because I'm right next to a hydro dam. So I was like, you've got hydro power, so that always just keeps flowing, right? The power, but apparently the lines go out. So anyway. Solar batteries, solar systems, whether you like solar or not, I just think bad policy creates bad outcomes and policy people do not think about stuff. Um, I'm going to say I worked in the policy area for many, many years. And I used to cost policies and policies just used to roll over my desk every day. I used to cost, I used to personally cost three policies a day. So it costs what they cost and you know the impacts of them. Um, it was just harebrained ideas. Like people hadn't thought through the costs of the policy and what's it going to do long term. And I think that's what the solar system is. Instead of having a good, cheap power base, 
which is reliable, we've gone, oh, we're going to stick solar systems on every roof in Adelaide, except for those people that can least afford it, because that's, that's stuffed, and they're going to have high costs of food, high cost of power, high cost of petrol, and high cost of rent, and they can least afford it, but that's okay, let's, let's, let's vote who we vote for. Um, that just, you know, think about stuff. Like, at the moment, there's a push for electric cars, and I'm like... I love the idea of an electric car because that means I have to pay less tax, right? At the moment, our tax rate on petrol is half. So every time I fill up my car, it's $100, $50 of it goes to the government in tax. So if I go to an electric car, I have to pay less tax. And I'm like, well, that's good. Less tax. Good. Well, who's going to be left paying the tax? People who can't afford electric cars. So the people who can least afford it are going to have to pay more tax. Just seems ludicrously. And I love the idea of electric cars, but policies people don't think of. Anyway, I'm going to leave you with that. Solar for the business and why I'm doing it. Um, and this is for the house, but same house, shop, doesn't matter. I've got it on, I've got it on all my shops. Um, I have it on all my houses. Um, solar and now yeah, solar batteries. Stephen Han, thanks for watching. Bye.